the sin condition that keeps us oftentimes separated from him. He loves us so very much that he came into the world so that nothing could separate us from his love. He sent his son Jesus to die for our sins, to remove them as far as us as the east is from the west, and to bring us as close to the Father as he would love us to be. And so as a called ordained servant of Christ and by his command, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. now to confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll continue with our children's message given today by Chelsea Erickson. Parents, you can come forward with your kids if you would like to do so. that I wanted to show you. I've got a little shoe, and I've got some Play-Doh, and I found a truck, and a block, and a boot. Do you know what color all of these things are? Red. If you put on some goggles, some lookers, and you look around the church, do you see anything red today? A lot of red, right? There's banners that are red. We have our red carpet. You're right, the exit sign is red. We have a lot of red in our church today because red is what helps us celebrate a special holiday called Reformation. Reformation is a special thing we celebrate in the church. There was a man named Martin Luther, and Martin Luther loved going to church, but he started to think, oh, I don't know if I'm doing all the right things. I don't know if God likes me enough. I think I need to do more. I need to do more good things. Oh, I'm just not good enough. And then Martin Luther started reading the Bible some more, and he said, wait a minute. I don't need to do good things for God to love me. He already loves me, and he forgives me even when I don't do enough. And so he was the one who started the Reformation. And I thought I could use some Play-Doh to help us understand what it means for something to be reformed. Do you already know? You do. Oh, perfect. Is it red? Oh, green. Well, I'm going to use some red today. And maybe you can do this with your Play-Doh when you go back. And I'm going to take it out. And at first, I'm going to make a circle. And this is going to be like the church was when Martin Luther was going before the Reformation. So there I've got a nice circle. This was the church. And this is when Martin Luther started thinking, oh, I think some things could be different. I think maybe we should change some things. We should reform how we're thinking. So I'm going to keep my Play-Doh all here, and it's not going to change colors, but I am going to change the form. I'm going to see if I can squish it and mold it and maybe make it into something a little different. What does this shape look like? Yeah, a heart. I reformed my Play-Doh because Martin Luther knew it's not about what we do or how great we are. It's only about how great God is. And he sent Jesus to be great for us. So even if we don't do all the wonderful things, he still loves us and cares about us. Can you fold your hands and pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for our church. Thank you for loving us. 
even when we don't do the most awesome things. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture readings today, the first one is from Revelations chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Please stand as we read together our gospel reading. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Please be seated as we take a moment uh, to give thanks to God for the gifts that he has given to us, which we give back to the church. Please pray with me. Lord God, gracious Father, You have lavished upon us many gifts of time, talents, and treasures. Increase our thankfulness that we may give you the first fruits of what you have given us. In your son's name we pray, amen. We continue now with the next song. You shine out of the ashes. 
nations we rise, there's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. for leading us in song. Today on this Reformation Sunday, the text is from our gospel reading, John 8, verses 31 and 32, where Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you'll bow your heads with me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that you did not wait for us to come to you, but you saved us while we were still enslaved in sin. You died for us on the cross. You covered our sin with your blood. You bought us back and redeemed us to make us a part of your own family. You have set us free from sin and death and Satan, free to love you and free to follow you, free to serve those around us. Strengthen us always with your word and your spirit so that we might use the freedom that you've given to us for your purposes and for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, this is Reformation Sunday, and I, I think for us to understand the Reformation, we need to begin by starting to understand the culture of what was going on in Luther's day. What was going on in the church at the time when he was alive. The, the, the culture that was going on was filled with darkness. And it had been growing dark for a thousand years. Began with people in the church leadership who became more and more corrupt. Even in the Holy Roman Empire, there was distrust and dishonesty. There was murder that was going on both by church leaders and by people of the state. There was ignorance, poverty, crime throughout the land. People were deceived, again, both in the church as well as the state. The, the clear word of God, of God's love and mercy, was covered. It was hidden. People didn't know of God's love. They didn't know of his grace and his kindness. And then there were those who tried to speak out about God's word of truth. There were those who tried to tell others about God's grace, giving them a word of encouragement. But they were punished. They were imprisoned. People like Peter Waldo, John Wycliffe, John Huss. Some were imprisoned. Some were put to death. And while there were some people that sold everything that they had to put God's word in the language of the people, they too were hampered at every side. Ridiculed, tortured, again, some put to death. This was the culture that Martin Luther grew up in. Along with that, Luther, when he went to the monastery to become a monk, all he knew about God was that God was a just and holy God, and he was a sinful man. And he knew that a just and holy God would punish those who are sinful. And so he was terrified of God's wrath and anger. God's wrath and anger against sin. He knew that what he did did not please God. And so his heart was troubled. He was in despair. He was desperate. Desperate to hear a word of hope. A word of comfort. A word of encouragement. That would give him peace. Today, again, is Reformation Sunday, a day when we remember people like Martin Luther and other reformers who have gone before us, some who have had the desire to reform God's church, to bring it back in line with the Word of God. Today, we're reminded that God has given us His Word not only to teach us, but to share it with others, to give them words of comfort, words of hope, words of peace, Reminding us of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who He is and why He came. The very reason that God gives us His mercy and forgiveness was because of Jesus Christ. We're reminded that we live, we too live in a, a world at times that is dark. It is at times hostile. It is at times not very friendly. As we live and speak the word and truth of God. And so the theme of today's message is that in spite of that, we have a faithful God. And so our theme is a faithful God in a hostile world. A faithful God in a hostile world. We can go back in history, we can go back in the pages of Scripture and recognize that the world has always been a hostile place. We can go back to the beginning of time, to the time of Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God. They rebelled against God and one of their sons murdered another one of their sons as Cain killed his brother Abel. It was dark in Jesus' day as well. People who believed they, because they were children of Abraham that they were free. And Jesus said, you need, you need to understand that sin has invaded our life and it covers us, it entangles us, it covers us. And so you are not free. 
He said, because free entangles, because sin entangles us, we are slaves to sin. They didn't want to hear that. We're reminded as Jesus talked with his hearers in his day and in ours that Jesus is really the only one who can set us free. And that's why he came into the world, to demonstrate his love for us, to take our place, to die for us so that we might be set free and be made a part of God's family. And he reminds us that if the Son sets us free, we will be free indeed. It is this freedom and confidence that not only came to Jesus' disciples, but it came to the Apostle Paul. Before he was Paul, he was Saul. He was chasing down people who were Christians, trying to imprison them and put them to death. But on the road to Damascus, when Jesus appeared before him, he said, Paul, he said, well, his name was Saul. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And that's when Saul talked to Jesus and he recognized why Jesus had come and what he had done. And his life was changed. He became free. This freedom comes to you and to me at the time of our baptism when God has given us his Holy Spirit to remind us that we too are a part of God's family. And we're reminded that this freedom, our source of freedom, is found in Jesus Christ alone. It was because of his death, because of his resurrection, he has freed us from sin and death and Satan. He has freed us to live as God's people, free to be his children and free to share his love. Luther also recognized this freedom of God. It took place in, a, in an event in his life that we know now as the tower experience. He was up in a tower. He was studying God's word. He was struggling with this fact that God is a holy and righteous God and he was a sinful man. And as he read through the pages of the book of Romans, he realized that the righteousness that God gives is not the righteousness that we earn, but it's the righteousness that God gives us because of what Jesus Christ has done. In fact, God declares us righteous when we trust in Christ. And when Luther realized this event, he said it was as if I was reborn. He wrote later about this tower experience in his commentary to the book of Romans in the preface. And these are the words that he said as he talked about God's Grace and the faith that would cling to God's grace. He said, faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure and certain that a person would stake their life on it a thousand times. This confidence of God's grace makes us glad and bold and happy in dealing with God and all of his creatures. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, a person is ready and glad without compulsion to do good to everyone, to serve everyone, to suffer everything, to live and praise this God who has shown them this grace. This is my prayer for you and for me, that you would know God's grace is so powerful and his love so strong that it would be the motivating power in your life not only as you love God, but as you love those around you as well. This past week, Pastor Scott and I in our coffee and clergy, we were talking about, use Martin Luther and his, as an example, there was a, a pamphlet that he had written called On the Freedom of a Christian. It can be summarized in these two sentences that Luther wrote. He said, a, a Christian is perfectly free and Lord of all because of this freedom that Christ gives us and subject to none. And, at the same time, a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all and subject to all. Free, with no other lord or master, but also free to serve those around us. Sometimes we ask the question, how can this be? How can this be? But this is why God has set us free. 
God has set us free. Again, Luther realized that our freedom was a freedom to tell others of God's grace. And when Luther was asked to recant of his writings, his pamphlets, his sermons, when he was standing before the emperor with the possibility of imprisonment or death, Luther said, I can't recant. I have to stand on the word of God. He said, here I stand, I can do no other. He realized that this is the source of his freedom and the source of his relationship with God. Luther realized later and talked about this freedom, that our freedom is not a freedom to live for ourselves, but it is a freedom to love God with all of our heart and soul and strength and mind. It is a, a freedom to love our neighbors, those around us, those whom God has given to us. It is a freedom to use the gifts that God has given us to love and serve those near us. And what a joy it is when we use the gifts of God to care for those in need. Luther also recognized that this freedom, with this freedom comes a responsibility. Even as we live in a hostile world. Luther recognized the joys and challenges that come with this freedom. And one of the joys that he recognized because of this new freedom that he had, he recognized that he was free to get married. And so Luther married a woman who was a former nun, Catherine von Bora. She was intelligent. She was a faithful woman. She became the joy of Luther's life. And another joy that they shared was that of having children. They had five children together. Though their second, Elizabeth, died when she was born. And later on, there was another daughter that they had, Magdalena. When she was 13 years old, she too passed away because of the illness that was sweeping through their community. And Luther later said that was the greatest, most difficult time in his life, was getting through her death. Luther worked hard to teach his children the word of God. He worked hard to tell them about the love of God and through their life and his life with them, he would ask questions of them and ask them to reflect on God's word and later these questions got put down and they became known as Luther's small catechism. A booklet to help parents and others teach the faith. It uses the basic parts of, uh, parts of the faith, like the Ten Commandments and the Creed and the Lord's Prayer, to teach us of God's love, to teach us of our need for forgiveness, to teach us that we are children of God and that we can call God our Father. And so we ask the question of ourselves today, people who have been set free because of Christ's love for us, we ask the question, how does God want us to live? How does he want us to live? What can we use this freedom for? We also use this freedom to love others. We celebrate the gift of Christ. We celebrate his love for us. We recognize the challenges that are before us and that even when we fall, God himself remains faithful to forgive us, to love us, to keep his name on us and to remind us who we are as his children. We're reminded that his love will never fade. Jesus said it well in our gospel reading that if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. My prayer for this day is that you will use your freedom to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. That you will use this freedom that God has given you to love those around you so that they too will know God's love. That they will rejoice in that love and use their gifts today and in eternity. For always for God's glory. And to that all God's people can say, Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our rock and our stronghold. We trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing our next song.
We now go to our Lord in prayer, praying for all people and for the whole Christian church. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for all your goodness and tender care, especially on this Reformation Festival. Thank you for the gift of your Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us and give us fertile hearts to keep it and bring forth its good fruit in our lives. Great Physician, we ask that you would extend your power and your presence upon those who need healing. Lisa, Lauren, Colleen, Cheryl, Bill, Pam, Sue, Karen, Teresa, Susan, Amanda, Pam, Annie, Roy, Deb, Edie, Linda, Linda, and our homebound members, and all those we lift up to you in our hearts for spiritual and physical healing. that you might comfort them in their trials and restore their lives. Jesus Christ, you give us the perfect example of love. We rejoice with Howard and Sandy for their 54th wedding anniversary and Benjamin and Megan Shrink for their fifth wedding anniversary. Strengthen them with love for one another and for you. Gracious Father, bless, guide, and govern our high school youth and college age young people at King of Kings, that they may grow in grace and serve you well, developing their knowledge and skills not for their own sakes, but for your glory and for the welfare of their neighbors. Lord of the nations, in your grace you have blessed the United States with peace and prosperity. Give us wisdom to recognize these as your gifts to us, not from our own merit, but solely from your grace, that we may use them to be a blessing to others. Holy Spirit, be present with those who watch and work on behalf of others, especially the U.S. military, first responders, and all those in harm's way serving our country and community. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger, and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Prince of Peace, you desire that all your children may dwell in harmony on earth. Bring peace to those who suffer in war-torn countries, in the Middle East, in Russia, and in Ukraine, that they, trusting fully in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversary, but may rejoice in your deliverance. Almighty God, continue to raise up faithful pastors, that repentance and forgiveness of sins in Christ's name would be spread throughout the world. We pray especially for Presidents Harrison and Hagen of the LCMS and LCMS Missouri District, Pastors Bob and Joshua at St. Mark's in Eureka, Kip and Ivy as they serve abroad, Lutherans in Jewish evangelism, and persecuted Christians throughout the world. Lord, into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is God's gift for Christians who are properly instructed. In communing, we want people to receive Christ's body and blood for their good. This means that as you come to the Lord's table, you affirm with each communicant that Jesus is your Savior and Lord, and with Lutheran Christians, you confess, I recognize and confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sin and ask God's forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is my only Lord and Savior from sin, Satan, and death. I believe that the risen Christ is really present in the sacrament, and under the form of the bread and wine, I receive his true body and blood for the forgiveness of my sin 
and the strengthening of my faith and life. I resolve to dedicate my life to the service of my Lord in his body, the church, by regular group worship, sacrificial giving, thankful living, and sharing the gospel with others. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, if you have a communion kit, uh, you can take that out. You can be seated. And we want to welcome you to the table of the Lord. You can take that top cellophane layer and peel it back. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. You can peel back the second tab. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. This time I'll invite our ushers to come forward to dismiss row by row to come forward for communion today.
Now may this body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace with joy, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Amen. As you go this day, also go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like clouds before you, open to the sun of Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.